Hello, today I would like to share with you six things that you will hate, hate about being a digital nomad. If you are interested in living this lifestyle, please go and check out my new website. There's a link down in the description where you can sign up for my free monthly email and receive exclusive videos just like this. You have probably heard the expression fake news, but did you know that within the digital nomad community there are fake people selling fake dreams? The reality is that you will be spending a lot of your time in your accommodation or in coffee shops. You will not be working on a beach or next to the pool sipping a cocktail. It just isn't reality. And it's really important that you realize this from the offset if you are thinking about becoming a remote worker and traveling. And that leads me on to the first thing that you might hate about being a digital nomad, and that is working alone. You will have to spend eight, nine, 10 hours working in your accommodation and coffee shops, because that is the amount of hours that you need to put in to make a living so that you can live in cities like Tokyo and Seoul. If you want to be a successful remote worker, you are going to have to put the time into it. Communicating with customers and clients and even family is so much easier in the 21st century. We've got the likes of Slack and Skype and HipChat and Google Hangouts and WhatsApp where we can communicate with people very easily. So you don't always have to feel lonely and remote. There are ways that you can communicate with people without any major problems, providing of course that you have a good quality internet. The second thing that you might hate being a remote worker is struggling to make friends, to build relationships, because you are moving around from one place to the next all the time. I travel to a new place once a month, so it's very difficult to make friends and keep them. You've got the likes of Facebook, where you can add people and keep in touch, but it isn't the same as that face-to-face -face interaction that you would get as you are traveling. I think it's also really important to keep in touch with friends back home. And when you visit back home, that you take time to visit them and catch up. Find out what's been going on in their life. Don't just talk about everything that you've done because you are so excited about all of your travels. Make sure that you ask them about their life and what they've been getting up to. Keep in touch with them as you are traveling and continue to build that relationship as you are traveling. I think is really, really important. The third thing that you might hate as a digital nomad are time zones. Because if you have customers or clients that are based at the other side of the world, you might have to adjust your schedule and routine to accommodate them. For example, I am based in Asia and most of my clients are based in the USA. So often I have to work into the evening as late as two, three o'clock in the morning. Now for me, that suits me because during the day I like to go out and explore or relax or create videos or work on my own little projects and in the evening I find that is when I am more productive. But it's bearing that in mind beforehand if you think that you can only work four hours a day, if you can only think that you can just work when you want to work, that's not always going to be the case depending on the type of work that you are doing. I will also say about time zones, when you are traveling from place to place, you have to adjust to these time zones, you get jet lag. And if you are working later in the evening and during the day you've been traveling, it can be incredibly tiring. So if you are traveling from one place to the next, try and make it at a weekend when it's much easier, you don't have the pressure of work. The fourth thing that you might hate about being a digital nomad is financial management. You will find that some customers and clients do not pay you on time and that you have to continuously chase them for invoices. I've been very lucky in that the contracting work that I do 
the clients pay on time every single time but you might not be as lucky as me I've had freelance clients in the past that I've taken two or three months to process my invoice especially if they are bigger corporate companies worth bearing that in mind it can take some time to get paid so you have to be very good at managing your money make sure you have a contingency contingency plan a pot of money that you can call upon should you need it a savings account that you put money into on a regular basis i think that's really important as a remote worker to have that more so that you can sleep at night not worrying about can i afford to pay for my next accommodation am i going to be able to pay for my flight so it's really worth bearing that in mind. The fifth thing that you might hate about being a digital nomad is traveling light. You might have a suitcase, or in my case, a backpack, and you can't just buy any items at a whim. You have to be very careful about the items that you buy because you have to store it in your suitcase or your backpack. You don't have a base where you can store items that you might not need for your next trip. So it's worth bearing that in mind. And yeah, it's, it's a challenge, it really is. I love my gadgets, I love my camera gear, and I want to buy loads of different lenses and loads of different cameras, but obviously I can't because I can't carry it all. I'm limited to seven or 10 kilograms in weight in my bag. And also the space itself in a 46 litre backpack isn't huge, especially if you have medication and contact lenses and clothes and all the other essential items that you need to be able to travel and work remotely. I've got to be honest and say that sometimes I do feel a little bit jealous when I see these people with their home studios and cool offices, but I decided to live this lifestyle and I love it and I like the minimalism effects of this life that I'm leading. The sixth thing that I think you will hate about being a digital nomad is, well, airports. Airports suck. You have to be at an airport hours before your departure. There's the security, there's delays, cancellations, lost luggage. Airports are a pain in the ass. And it might sound fun and exciting traveling to a new place, but after four years, after a couple of years, it starts to become a little bit tiresome. But I think the excitement of visiting a new place does keep you on with the traveling and dealing with the issues that you have with travel and airports. But yes, you will quickly learn to hate airports, believe me. I have to be honest and say that this lifestyle is so much more stressful than living the nine to five in an office. And that is because you are living outside of the comfort zone. You are living life not like the norm. And that is going to be stressful. And you learn to deal with that stress over time and deal with it in a positive way rather than getting you down and being depressed and negative all the time. So I think it's really important you realise that though, that you are living out of the comfort zone and there are added stresses to that, as I've previously said, cancellations, delays, you name it, things can happen, booking issues, booking the wrong dates for your flights. It, it's happened to me, look, I'm missing flights, yeah, let's just not go there. If you have any questions on remote working, please leave them down in the comments section below. And if you are new to this channel, hit on that subscribe button for more remote working tips and advice in the future. Also, please do go and check out my new website. There's a link to my email list where you can receive exclusive content just like this. Until next time, travel safe and take care.